Hey guys, it's Dave for Gamers on Games. So, um, I recently had a thought regarding friendly local game stores and the fact that they're going to need more help and more income when it does come time to reopen because it sounds like the country's kind of moving that direction of we've had enough, we're going to reopen. It's a whole other topic for another day as to whether we should or not. But it, regardless, it does sound like we are moving in that direction. And that being said, small businesses are going to need help. One of the smaller businesses that I feel probably gets overlooked is going to be the uh, the hobby stores. So, that being said, had a thought, and I'm not sure if other stores have tried this previously, and if you have, by all means, please put it in the comment section below. Let's get a discussion going. So, here's my thought. So, you go to a friendly local game store, and they have a, a glass case generally filled with um, one, you know, a uh, single pack, uh, magic cards, you know, it's all your ultra rares and the holographics and the ones in foreign languages and all that stuff. I mean, all the ones that are, you know, big ticket items. Then you also have, um, a case that's generally filled with like the blind box pre-painted D and D minis. Okay. And those are for sale. Well, here's the thing while they're waiting for sale, why not rent for in-store use? And what I'm thinking is, is that you could rent them out, you know, a dollar or a dollar for a group or whatever um, for in-store use. This would be really good for, um, you know, uh, Wizards of the Coast events or whatever the new Living Greyhawk kind of thing is. Um, I remember they were doing this back in 3.5. They were doing like, um, like an organized play system i'm not sure what the current one is um and my thought is you know you have these minis there and you're waiting for them to sell but while you're waiting they're not really doing much for you they're just kind of taking up real estate what about renting them and here was my thought and and again this is all really tertiary and you know results may vary but why not make those stock work for you as much as you can so what i was thinking is is like if you have like really tiny bases like sturges or something like five of them for like a buck and if you have like small bases it's like three of them for a buck then mediums it's and mediums and larges would be like a dollar a piece and then you start getting into the big guys and then it's like two three dollars to rent them for the day and you're saying well yeah okay whoop you do it's like a buck here and a buck there right but first of all there's no overhead on that it's a case of the materials already there and waiting to be sold why not two um it, the the factor for your customers is this if you're selling them like a, a, a tiny base is probably like unless it's like something ultra rare or whatever it's like a dollar maybe a couple cents something like that and then progressively up so let's say you're going to do um you want to run an encounter and you need two ogres and a hill giant okay Ogres are like large creatures, so they probably fall in that $1, maybe $2 range, you know, without getting into a bunch of cents, but a dollar or two. Hill Giant, a little bit bigger, probably like a 2 to $3 rental, right? Now let's compare that to um, actually buying them, okay? So rental costs, we're shooting around 4 or $5, okay? To buy them... The ogres alone are probably going to be about somewhere between four and six dollars a piece. Okay, so you got two of those. So let's say cutting cutting the middle. You know, if I'm saying four to six, we'll say five dollars a piece. The average, you're already up to ten bucks. Hill giant more, probably like seven to nine dollars. So we call it in the middle, and we call it eight. You're about eighteen dollars. So eighteen dollars to buy versus five dollars to rent. Now, it's a case of, well, why would you charge more for the bigger stuff? Well, because you're not going to use it as often. Let's let's be honest. It's really cool to look at when it's on your shelf, but in terms of how much are you going to really use it in your games, probably not that much. Bigger creatures tend to be more like bosses or um, pivotal plot points. Unless it's going to be a recurring villain, you're probably not going to use it that much, right? So wouldn't it be better to rent? 
Now, the reason I'm also saying in store is because it's a little too easy for things to get lost. People forget to bring it back. And then you have to work like a library service and that nobody wants that kind of hassle. But in store, you can hold on to it. Now, the other thing I was thinking when I had this thought was expanding it out, kind of extrapolating it and saying, hey, a lot of the cornerstones fiscally for a lot of game stores is Warhammer. What about potentially having armies to rent? Now, this is beyond the regular demo armies because most stores generally have like um, a pair of like the basic set for whatever's current or whatever was like, you know, within like one or two past big releases. So, you know, it wouldn't be uncommon to see like a Dark Vengeance set um, out there for demo. But not the demo set, but I'm thinking like an actual army. And what you do is you have that army, um, and I'm, I'm thinking maybe a thousand points or 1500 points, nicely painted, fully done. And what you do is you say, hey, listen, this is here for rent. And what it does is it'll allow people to experiment either new players who are just coming in and heck, you know what you can do? Supplement it with a crib sheet. You say, hey, listen, you know, this army is built for this. This is the abilities. This is how this works. And making a crib sheet, totally legal in terms of, you know, use of the documents because you're not giving the whole document. What you're doing is you're going to give them like a cut and paste of relevant sections. You know, as for actual rules, either it's a case of hopefully whoever they're going to play against has it. Or I think there's actually like a... Um, uh, a quick start guide. I think that's free from GW. I'd have to check on that. But most games have that kind of a thing anyway. They'll, you know, it's like, hey, listen, you're not really paying for the rules. You're paying for the minis. We're trying to market you on the minis. So rules are free. Um, or at least at a very reduced cost, you know, and then quick start guides are pretty much free um, as a PDF. So what you do is, you, you know, if, you, if you're going to have a PDF, you can print it out and have it out there. You're not selling it. Remember, you're not selling it, so it's not like you're turning profit on it. You're having it there so new players have the reference guides that they can read and they can play. And what it is, is you, but you have like several armies for people to rent. Again, this is going to occupy a lot of space. And if you want to display it nicely so that people have it, my recommendation would be um, glass case, you know, multi-tiered, one army per, like, per type. Like, I wouldn't do... Um, an army of Nurgle and then like an army of like Zeech and then another one for Slanesh. Now, what I'd say is, okay, you know, I have um, one Death Guard. I've got Ultramarines. I've got um, something based around Quorum Berserkers maybe instead of the Death Guard. But, you know, and then like a Tau and an Imperial Guard and then um, Nids because Nids are really eye-catchy. Um, and Orcs because Orcs are very popular, especially with the newest set that just came out. Um, with uh, um, the Space Wolves versus Orcs. So what I'm thinking is, is that you have this, and then it's a case of, for rental cost, because it is a bigger thing. First of all, I think you would have to have a release. I really do. I think that having a release on this would not be the worst idea. And what it says is basically, hey, this is the condition we gave it to you guys in, minus regular or assumed wear and tear, we expect it to come back in the same position. And then in the same condition. And if it doesn't, listen, it's a couple bucks um, because it's going to be time and effort to replace and repair, which I don't think is unfair. Uh, and what you do is you, say, you have out, um, you know, you have out your armies. And I would say like, I don't know, 25 bucks. And the reason I'm saying like 20, 25 bucks is because at 20 or 25 bucks, it gives people a taste, but they don't have to put in the real big investment into trying an army because I cannot imagine how absolutely infuriating it would be to be like, oh yeah, I totally want to play orcs. orcs, 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 and you play them and you're like, oh my God, I hate orcs. I hate them so much, but you've already invested. So now what do you do? I could trade. Maybe I can break kind of even, but it's a case, or, or I could try and sell them and take a huge loss, but there's a case of where do I want to fall on this? Then it's a case of, God forbid, you know, you, you really want to sell or have the option to buy them, then you put them at a fair market price and you say, okay, listen, here's your army. You know, you rented it. Okay, cool. If you want to buy it, the rental cost comes off the buy. Why not? Um, the only thing is, is that there is a time and an effort that's going to be into having to replace that army you just sold. Um, 
And I think it's a case of if you have, you know, patrons who are really good painters, like I'm not saying necessarily Golden Goblin level, but, you know, people who are good, maybe it's a case of, listen, you have them on a retainer and you say, listen, hey, here's the deal. Anytime we sell a pre-painted army, we're going to need another one. We'll pay for the, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll pay for the cost of getting the new models. We'll pay you for pay, painting them and that's it. Um, and then you're hoping to make the cost back on rental and then ultimate sale. I don't think this is the worst idea. And here's the thing. Those armies are actually going to get more valuable, say, if one of those models goes out of, out of production. I mean, it's still supported, but it's out of production. You know, especially like real specific figurines, like certain heroes and named characters and things like that. But it was a thought I had, and I'm, I don't know if anyone's actually ever done this or done something like this. If they have... Please, by all means, I had already pitched this idea to uh, the owner of my own friendly local game store, and it's a case of, I think it's a really cool idea, I think it would be a really a big help, but I don't know if this has already been done and to what success level. So, um, feedback is always welcome. So guys, uh, comment section below, like, share, subscribe, and if you guys um, have store owners in your area that you would like to send this to i would greatly appreciate it because again i'm looking to get that feedback um that's really what this is all about so um i hope everybody's being safe in quarantine i hope everybody is making progress on painting all that pile of plastic and metal that we got sitting around because i know you do because i know i do and uh i hope that you know we'll eventually all be able to gather round tables again and throw dice at each other <laughs> okay guys so this is gonna be dave for gamers on games signing off